Hello guys and welcome back. We are getting ready for round number three of the PUBG Southeast Asia Scrim City uh, matches for tonight. And uh, we had two very exciting games there uh, in uh, Erangel. So now we are moving to Miramar. Uh, both going to be played on first person perspective. And uh, I think I will be having a co-caster coming on uh, pretty soon here. So Jin is going to be coming on on Discord and we're going to be co-casting together. So just going to wait for him to come in here, settle uh, some of the admin stuff, and we shall be good to go. So yeah, we did see in the very first round that was a very clutch uh, and very tense ending there after it was a little bit of an urban finish in the southern part of Yasnaya. So we did see that... Um, uh, now Kendricks, if not mistaken for Lapar Genesis, was the last player left alive and he was able to clutch it out against Katao um, in a one-on-one -on -one battle, no less. And uh, in the last game, we did see that uh, it was actually going to be the Airwolf uh, Vince Pro guys who were able to come out with that chicken dinner after they were going toe-to-toe -to -toe with RRQ and uh, and whatnot. So I think uh, Co-Caster is here. Hey, Jin, how's it going? Hello, Jay. What's up? What's good, Jay? Uh, it's all good, man. Just enjoying some of the matches this evening. Are you having a good time? I am having a good time dealing with all these players as, you, as usual. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for those who are not aware of what goes on behind the scenes, Jin works really hard on making sure everyone uh, is nice and prompt here on time and uh, not going to settle for any bullshit, right? Yes, definitely. So I, I believe this is our first time casting together? Yeah, so I think it will be. It's going to be a, a fun time, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we did have a little bit of a co-cast. I think uh, oh, that was yeah. all <laughs> way back at the Geek uh, Geek Arena soft launch. I think that, stuff. that yeah, that doesn't count as one. <laughs> yeah, but no worries. Looking forward to casting more together in the future, man. Um, and for those who don't know, both of us will be casting in the PUBG Malaysia Singapore Championship Finals on 13th, 14th of October. So that is going to be massive, man. Are you excited? I'm super excited. I can't wait to lose my voice together with you, Jay. <laughs> Absolutely, man. So we are just... <laughs> you, better, you, better, you better get ready to start screaming with me. Oh, don't worry, man. I'm going to lose my voice in quick fashion just like you. So I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be my first, uh, first time at LAN event, no less here. Ah, yeah. So uh, that's yeah, going to be exciting. You do fine. Yeah. You have uh, Ang Mo Blitz, so it's fine. <laughs> okay, that doesn't make sense, but okay. <laughs> well, yeah, in any case, so which LAN event do you think that you enjoyed the most since you started doing this, actually? Uh, for now, the most interesting LAN event, I would say the PUBG... No, not that one. Probably the Circle of Champions, Circle which of was Champions. done by Cooler Masters. Ah. Yeah, but that was a little bit more of a community event. But because we had some teams from uh, India, we had teams from Indonesia, uh, it was all held at Battle Arena. So I think that was a fun event. We got to see a different kind of uh, play style coming in from all the other countries in the region. Yeah. Uh, we did see some of the Malaysia teams actually pulled off some great kills and some great plays as well. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to the Malaysia and Singapore majors to see actually how are the Singapore's the Singapore teams are going to be uh, coming on top of these Malaysia teams again because previously we did see the Singapore teams always dominating the, the Malaysia scene as well. Yep. But from the recent tournaments, what I've seen, the Malaysia teams have really stepped up. So, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of your efforts as well, putting together this scrim as one of the founders for the PUBG Southeast Asia uh, Scrim City uh, ma uh, scrim matches that we have on a weekly basis. You know, I think that's definitely a good place for a lot of Malaysian teams to actually uh, get a lot of practice in, especially against uh, yep. international competition. Yeah, and of course, we are looking forward to expand our contacts to Thailand because uh, for right now, we don't really have any Thailand teams coming in. Uh, probably they have their own scrim. So I'm trying to see if I can pull some of the Thai teams in and that will basically level up the scrims uh, a notch when Thai is coming. Oh yes, the Thailand powerhouse teams are definitely a force to be reckoned with and, uh, and looking forward to, to seeing everyone uh, progress forward even from our Malaysian finals in Battle Arena as uh, end of the October they're going to be all going to um, Thailand as well to finish off for the Southeast Asia finals so that's going to be an exciting one, yep. can't wait. Um, so just to get started in this game, guys, uh, we do see that Circle is all the way down towards the, the southern edge. is covering a huge body of water. That's going to really make it difficult. I think so many teams are just not inside the zone at the moment. So uh, I hope they got their uh, driver's licenses ready. Uh, usually quite a feature here on 
any of these scrims, be it this one or uh, even Battle Arena, everyone seems to not have their driver's licenses with them. But in any <laughs> case, uh, we shall see how that is going to shape up as, oh, Arthur Crosby being the first loss here in this game as he's uh, going to be taken out by the players from... Uh, City and Fighter, no least, as they continue their rotation towards Valley Del Mar here, nice and early, trying to get ahead of the zone here. Now, like um, Jin, you you get to see this week in and week out all these uh, these different teams coming in from here, and they all got very unique play styles. I think like uh, once you actually see them put all together, you know everyone's forced to adapt and everything. Like what what kind of um, uh, play styles do you see here predominantly coming from other countries that maybe you don't see so much in Malaysia and maybe even Singapore? I think the hu the biggest difference when it comes to Malaysia and Singapore compared to the other countries in the region is that the commitments, when the commitment when it comes to killing, the commitment when it comes to pushing a, a compound, when it comes to crashing into a compound, is slightly more different. We do see the Filipinos, they are slightly more aggressive when they are committing into a, a compound. Unlike the Malaysia and Singapore teams, they tend to go around compounds to scout out, which is pretty, it's not to say a bad play, but it's more on a safer play compared to what the Filipinos are doing. Mm -hmm. But looking at how the Filipinos are playing, for example, like dogs, like Mad Dog, uh, Unexpected, one of these few guys that I've watched since day one of the scream, CJ18, these guys, they are very aggressive when it comes to pushing compound, and they are uh, well organized when it comes to this kind of situation so maybe the malaysian and singapore teams they can learn a few things uh coming from the screams uh, as well as watching your stream as well and your casting as well where they get to see the bigger picture of how teams actually move around so yeah that is one of the biggest fact the biggest difference that i see coming in from teams around southeast asia the definitely different countries have different style of playing. We do see some teams uh, going a little bit more on the camping strat where they hold uh, compounds slightly more to the middle of the circle and then they move in slowly by the edge of the circle, uh, closing in, closing in. And then we do see some teams who tend to play outside of the circle and then come in late. So mm. sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So yeah, these are the difference, the minor differences that you will actually notice uh, coming from some of the teams here. Yeah, absolutely. That's very good points there. And I think uh, something that I've been observing after seeing a lot of these uh, different teams coming in here, Philippine teams are definitely very powerhouse in nature. They can have a very wide uh, range of skill sets available to them. Like you said, they can play very aggressively if they want to. They can play both in the center of the circle. They can play on the edge of it as well. I think uh, that's something which I, I see in a lot of the more Malaysian-based scrims that might be going on. It's, there's a lot of conservative play in general, and that might actually uh, mean that that, oh, we're just going to try and get a good position in the circle or die trying, which actually could be, um, you know, uh, not a very consistent approach, especially with a lot of the tournaments these days having so many rounds available to them that it really does uh, test, you know, them whether or not you can play both play styles. So, yeah, I mean, I part of like why I like to do uh, these kind of like casting streams and everything, I do want like, uh, you know, all the communities to grow and uh, definitely in Malaysia uh, as a uh, uh, not to say that uh, we're maybe underdeveloped and stuff, but I think uh, we stick to our play styles a bit, maybe a bit more, which um, which when it comes to like all these very international events and everything could get caught off guard. But again, this is a great practice point, you know, to actually try and see how things are, are going to shape up against the rest of the competition in Southeast Asia. Yeah, definitely. And also just to mention one thing that we do see most of the Malaysian teams, right, in the screams, in the tournaments, in, when the tournaments are within Malaysia, they can play pretty good, pretty aggressive. And they are very comfortable with taking off fights after fights. But when it comes to a little bit more of an international scene, that's when we start to choke. As in the Malaysians, they, I don't know what's, what's up with them. They, they kind of hold back a little bit when it comes to international teams participating in screams, in tournaments as well. Maybe they're just not comfortable as much as the international teams. Maybe not as experienced as them. But I do feel that the Malaysian teams, uh, they, they do need to step up a little bit when it comes to this kind of situation. Like, as long as they play their game, as long as they are comfortable in what they're doing. Uh, for example, if you're comfortable in Los Leones, just drop Los Leones. Don't try to go for Tumacera, don't try to go for Picado. You will get killed instantly if you are not familiar. Play your own game, try to play your own game instead of playing another person's game. And I think that is one of the factors to take and learn as well from the other teams.
Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's going to be a gradual process. Uh, oh, my game crashed, so I'm going to have to get back in pretty quick. But in any case, so we can still keep on talking. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, that's definitely going to be something which is going to be an incremental change, you know. So hopefully with uh, bridging uh, a lot of the gap here in terms of showing these um, Malaysian teams, you know, the, the different play styles, they can also appreciate uh, how uh, these different forms of playing are, you know. I mean, like one of the teams that I see, I, I mean, most of the Philippine teams seem very strong and cap very capable, but like dogs especially, they, they can play all sorts of styles there. And uh, really, you know, is is really exhibited on to this stage. But surprisingly, dogs not having the best of nights here. They didn't really get into the, yeah, um, they, the top five. Yeah. They're lacking a little bit in this uh, this week's scream. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty... But I'm one thing I have to say, though, I'm quite... Not to say upset, not to say disappointed, it could have been better. Like, I would like to see more Malaysian teams actually joining the screams. Because yes, right now, we are having a lot of Philippine teams. There's a lot of Filipino teams. And we are getting like three to four Malaysian teams. So mm. where are you guys? Where are you guys? Are you, if you guys are tuning in, if you guys actually have a team, if you guys have joined tournaments before, um, calling out teams like Red Sea, uh, some of the Lapar organization teams, why the face gaming especially why are you guys not joining the screams like we are doing this to basically hope to help you guys step up your game when it comes to a land event or online event tournament uh which we are super packed for this few months this couple of months we are having back-to-back -back events even like myself i'm casting a different tournament now you're casting a different tournament yeah. uh otherwise we'll be casting it together so yeah. it's just it's just crazy guys so i would really like to see this more of these Malaysia teams actually coming into our screams. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, the forum is here. So, if you're one of these uh, Malaysian pro teams, do try and see uh, how you can get into these scrims here. It does offer a great opportunity to practice. Though, of course, I know that the timing will be a little bit of a challenge given that there are so many tournaments, as you were saying, uh, on every weekend here. Um, this coming weekend, I think Predator League is starting and uh, Qualifier yep. 3 of PUBG Malaysia Singapore Championship is also starting. Uh, yep. It's just an incredibly packed schedule. Oh, man, as well as ongoing. Yep. Yeah. Oh, is uh, shifting from country to country. Malaysia finished uh, two weeks yep. ago, which uh, you were casting there, so that was a really nice piece of work. And uh, I think last weekend was uh, Singapore, right? And Singapore. So basically, just a quick uh, introduction to what's happening on the Omen side. So Omen by HP is done by the regionals. Uh, they are linking up 11 countries, including Japan, South Korea, uh, New Zealand, and Australia. And basically, teams will be flown to Bangkok for the finals in November as well. That's a pretty good setup right there. And it really is uh, bringing all these regions together, which, uh, like, never really seen it before. Okay, maybe, like, if you're thinking PGI level, then yes, that, that could be <laughs> something yeah. else. This is, yeah. But it's yeah, nice but to see I'm... a non-official, uh, non or rather, like, um, spearheaded by PUBG Corporation itself, actually right. uh, being able to do these kind of things. So that's exciting for me. Yep. So I think we can start getting into the game as we do see a lot of fights coming in. Uh, Geek Fam coming all the way from the northwest side of the map. Uh, going to be driving past by El Pozo, trying to make their way into the circle. This is one of the circles that we don't often see. Even at competitive level, I mean, you have casted a few games. Uh, you have casted 12 games alone. Respect to that. Hands off to that. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. It's, it's not a circle that you see every day. So it's going to be very interesting to see actually how players actually move in. Uh, to the circle like what we are seeing now because most majority of teams are already in the center here uh where we are seeing it a little bit more on the north of uh los higos uh not too many teams involved the as chumacera as well being one of the top uh locations in uh, public domain games yeah absolutely i mean uh the tactics here for for all these kind of competitive games is just so different from normal pub games you know so like if guys you're tuning in and uh you're not so uh well versed in this this is exactly the right place for you to uh get an appreciation for what p competitive pubg is about so i mean it's such a different game here and uh looking at you just look at how many oh, players are left at, alive here and oh the next circle, the circle is terrible it's really going to put a spanner into the works you know uh, i don't Know what really these guys are gonna do 
Can it can it land on the island on the east of Los Higos, please? <laughs> I, oh, I would love to see that. I would love to see all these players swim without having those uh, swimming buffs. And we already see that there are some teams daring to make the, the trip across the, the eastern bridge over here. And they're going to have a little bit of a collision here. As uh, I think we do see that it's going to be uh, squad 13 as well as uh, squad 12. 12 is uh, region... Uh, hold on, I have to check my... Uh, statistics over here. Well, statistics, I mean word. Uh, so yes, uh, it is going to be... Um, <laughs> is, re is Regium against yeah. Uh, Mista? Yeah, Regium against Mista. Mista is going to be squad 13 on your screen, guys. So they're going to be hold up here from advancing further towards, uh, on towards uh, the southern island here. As we do have Regium here just trying to go uh, to ham on them, you know. And really just try and restrict movement. We already see Rage Ooh, Boy and others moving snipe. across. Yeah, that was a nice snipe there. But luckily for Regium, they do have Super Raj there. So he could deploy the smoke and he's doing so. Whether Philip wants to push onwards. But wow, we have our first... One of our first teams going out as well, DPT, going out here after the... Look at all these teams converging here. That Western Bridge is absolutely crowded. It's got Geek Fam, it's got um, Gang FTY, all advancing from this position here after they're trying to get off onto this uh, island spot here. Danker even stopping in the middle here, but it looks like KNY got going to be able to knock him down. And that's going to be a man down for FDY in this battle here. But I am so stoked for seeing all these guys try to swim here. We're already seeing Dude, a number Jay, of people. I think this could be the fastest sort of semi-competitive game that I've casted. <laughs> it's so fast. Yeah, man. I mean, look, there's like so little real estate. I would just be happy to get one square meter right now if I was one of these players, you know. <laughs> it's absolutely nuts here. And uh, looking at it, we still got teams coming in from the zone. We see Dogs, the team that we were talking about much earlier on, actually moving all the way from the northeastern side, just getting inside the blue. And um, they're just ahead of it, in fact. And uh, currently on the screen, we already see that uh, Airwolf uh, Summit here uh, duking it out with uh, Resurgence at the moment here. But they do also have uh, Stadium Fighter here all the way in the northern part of the new zone at the moment. And it could be a little bit of a tricky situation uh, with Kasaki and uh, Brax, I think. Oh no, it's uh, Quadro coming down to help. So uh, Aeon in a little bit of trouble here. But he will be able to get a lot of hits onto Udin here and he's able to take him out. So Resurgence coming out on top for that particular moment here. But which team do you think has got a good position in this game, uh, Jin? Um, looking at how the circle is moving, I would say... <laughs> I would say Airwolf has a pretty decent location uh, where they're holding on right now. I don't really like the idea of uh, where the circle is on Los Higos. I'm pretty sure it will end up in the mainland instead of the islands. So yeah. looking at that, I think... Airwolf has a better position as well as Resurgence, for now. Yeah, I think Airwolf only that the fact that they lost two of their players in rotation, I think that's maybe just going to hurt them a little bit here, but that's not going to stop them. Entrub able to get the headshot onto Aeon as well. So he goes down there, but he should be okay. I mean, he's still got a lot of his team members, but I think this is the crucial moment to see where gonna this see third where the circle, circle is, is going to be going, man, because this is really going to, you know, really determine how things are I'm going calling to, it. It's going to be a north of Los Egos. Oh, I just realized my task manager no. has been open for Oh, ages. look at this! Oh, yes! Go. Yes! It is going to be exciting We are going to get an island finish for oh, once. This is going to be exciting. Even in pub games, I've only seen on the, the Eastern Islands like once, you know. But I mean, Dude, this I is think this else. is like a one in a million kind of uh, circle. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I look at all these Northern teams. They're not moving. They don't know what the hell to do, you know. This is such an awkward situation for them right now. And it's... uh uh, it'll be interesting to actually hear what the players are thinking and what are their plans to actually go into the next circle because this is crazy, like legit crazy and yeah. It's so I rare no to get this in a circles. pub game, man. You know, the in-game so leaders rare. have got to be yeah. dumbfounded right now. They have no idea what to do. Uh, for those on the stream, I want to apologize that my task manager has been open for a while and blocking <laughs> part of the stream here. So I do apologize for that one. And I'll see whether or not I can edit gonna, it out later on. Jay, I'm going to go into Geek Fam's Discord and just hear what they're thinking. And I'll come uh, back. Okay, sure thing. Catch you in a bit. 
But yeah, looking at it. Oh, Manparang able to finish off Rage Boy here. So that's going to be it for Z God here. So Manparang and Alan is just going to try and hold the fort for the time being. But Manparang is the only person on this island. So like, as Jin and I were discussing, this is so rare to see here. It's going to be so interesting. Look at all these teams. They are trying to push down on the eastern side here. So uh, they're going to have to make do with the situation. Uh, but yes, anyways, looking at how, how many teams here are going in the water already, we see Team Capcorn moving, Ronin is all, also swimming, we see Vengeance also moving here, but the bridge is the part where it's going to get absolutely congested Bye. here. Hey man, so how chaotic is it in the Geek Fam? Well, they, they, are very, they are very excited about the circle, they love the circle, uh, just because of how they rotated all the way coming from the north side. I believe they dropped in La Corbera and maybe even Alcantara, then they drove all the way down into the islands where the Minas del Sur is and then now they rotated all the way in and looking at where they are, they are in a pretty decent uh, spot in that circle so they are very happy of where they are right now, they are just having fun, they are just laughing uh, <laughs> same, uh, one of the players even almost knocked himself out from the vehicle so yeah, I, I think they are having fun, it's good yeah, yeah, I mean, I always love awkward circles. It really makes it for an interesting cast over here, you know, and uh, looking at all these teams just trying to move in, the blue zone is right on their tails, and uh, they're still fighting out here. Resurgence just trying to push into L Dogs for the time being here. DJ Strong going down. Uh, Arrow Wolf coming in from the west side. I don't think it's they are going to be surviving as they will be driving into the crossfire of vengeance here oh yeah vengeance so, all nicely set up here but exagon here gonna try and do the best he can they're already taking oh, the fire. Be run over can they get Doobie oh. Too? oh they managed to sort of get away but oh driver's license gone <laughs> right there exagon, the last player here for airwolf he's gonna have to duke it out with mox mox coming in to try and finish him off he does have the smoke out, but I don't think it's going to really obstruct the view. And looks like that's going to be it. So, Airwolf Summit getting eliminated there. But it looks like uh, just in the blue here, Resurgence still duking it out with L Dogs at the moment. And they're all taking a lot of damage here. I don't think oh they can get god, in. Oh my god, the Eastern Bridge. And CJ is not going to make things easy here for Oh, uh, them. it's going to be on the island. Oh yeah, so it's gonna be super interesting over here and now looking at how things are moving here on the bridge here It looks like uh, the team members of RRQ have managed to overcome Regium here So they've managed to take over this side and looks like GeekFam gonna set up shop here M Maybe at the bridge? No, they're actually moving a little bit further here Ooh, If they uh, get into the compound on the south side of where the circle is, it's gonna be so advantageous for them yeah, absolutely. Because and we do know that the, the circles, they tend to move away from the waters. It will not at land uh, in buildings, on buildings as well as on waters. So I believe it's going to be ending up somewhere right around where GeekFam is. If not, it's going to be on the east side of them, which is uh, going to be just nice for them. As there won't be any teams coming in uh, from, their, from their six as well. Yeah, very interesting fact there. And I, I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I'm not sure exactly on the settings that we use for this, but I think if it's PGI uh, related, it's going to be Circle 4 and uh, 8, which uh, prioritizes land above all else. Yep. Um, so now this is this is Circle 4. So this just shows you like how much of a problem the, the game has in trying to identify where to put the circle here. <laughs> so uh, this is incredible over here, you know. So it's like, it's always unique games like this which really tests the the resilience here of all these other teams and their ingenuity as well but geek fam looking strong they has four people ups here in the southern side um we are seeing all the dogs players just trying to shoot across from the the mainland here and momonji getting taken down by the rest of the mista players here and it's a bit of a shooting gallery but it looks like unexpected not gonna let that lie there as he's able to take down ping pong pangs there with a nice headshot Ooh, where, where did kayo come from look at the south side Kyle's on the boat. Where did he come from? I oh didn't my see goodness, him Kyle, in. what the hell? Snow Templar is still from? going strong here. So you see, that's the kind of ingenuity that we're we're talking about, guys. You know, it's like really amazing stuff here. And uh, now looking at things, GeekFam starting to exert their influence from the center of the island. They're now putting shots onto Team Capcorn at the moment. And it's a little bit of a dicey situation. And they have their sights set now on the bri western bridge where Airwolf Vince Pro is actually trying to get in. But currently it's going to be a tricky situation. But at least they got that tank of a bank bus there uh, going <laughs> to provide most of the cover <laughs> here for the time being. 
but they have problems here as they do have vengeance pushing in from the Lux Hugo's Island here at the moment. And uh, Mune is uh, the furthest player forward. Whether he can catch out these players, it looks like a nade just went right past his head. And uh, wow, he's able to catch out Misery here. And, uh, oh. Not, not gonna do much against that uh, barrel there. So really eating a number of bullets. Mox and uh, Doobie 2 deciding to go for a swim here. And um, yeah, not really gonna be any other way around it. Mamparang also making the swim here as the last person for our gang FTY oh. as he tries to survive in this game here. But now looking at how things are developing here, uh, we already see Private Dumb here just trying to duke it out for Mista as they try and catch some shots onto the rest of the players for the time being. Private Dumb also trying to catch also some of these players also swimming here. So uh, now looking at how things are going to be playing a part here, we do see that uh, the circle is moving in and uh, most of the teams are already inside but unexpected still very much on the the mainland here so it's going to be interesting to see how he's going to settle that one but mad dog at least is going to try and push this compound for the time being kai is just still chilling on the south side of the circle uh you can see where the next circle lands up i have no idea how teams are going to be playing this unexpected still left stranded on the mainland here he is going to be making a swim uh across to the other side but he doesn't have that much time i believe it is only 40 seconds Fifth, one minute, so it's going to be a one, a one minute before the next closure. And looking at the circle, Geek Fam is still smack in the smack right in the center of that. Uh, like I said, they are in the, one of the best situations, that one of the best positions that they can be uh, looking at where the circle is going right now. Yeah, absolutely. And if they can make sure all these teams get fended off and uh, forced to the peripheries and fight each other, that's going to be a game-winning solution for them. Uh, but looks like uh, Mad Dog here not even able to assault Mista right now. He's got a lot of teams coming in from the west side that he has to try and put a hold on to. But that is going to be a tough task for him. Unexpected, just still on the mainland here. Not able to do much else, but looks like Coppin here going to try and move in onto the position here from the rest of uh, Geek Fam at the moment. And looks like Savior is going to be able to spot a little bit of that rotation coming in here. But they do have a nice spot here. I mean, it's got a lot of cover available to them. And KNY God and Modi here just putting up some shots this time onto Vengeance here after they're trying to move in from that western side after their long swim. So all these players going... Really good biathlon uh, athletes over here. <laughs> biathlon e athletes, to be uh, corrected here. Uh, looks like unexpected force to get into the water here. And I think uh, that shallow part there, they can't exactly um, swim straight away here. So he was actually taking a lot of shots there, but he's one shot away from uh, being finished off here. And Private Dumb is not going to let him get away. But if not mistaken, you know, if you get the right angle, you can still penetrate the water a little bit. It's something that they haven't really mentioned in specifically in patch notes and, and yep. whatnot. But yeah, I remember back in the days when before they changed the, the water timing, it you was... You can uh, never shoot through it, yeah. Yeah, never shoot through it and you could stay alive for days and you just pop up quickly yep. and you'll be okay. Then you have to go redneck fishing if you really wanted to kill anyone. But now we see Vandal here trying to advance onto the two players from Ronin here. Currently Jatsu Cheesy Kimbap not being too aware. But looks like Jatsu able to catch the drop onto Vandal. Getting the DPS power out of the M249 here. Leaving Rio Favor as the last player for uh, for the Airwolf Vince Pro actually. And uh, wow, looks as though that uh, Team Capcorn is going to meet their end as well here. So that's a little bit unfortunate for them. So... Uh, yeah, you have to make do with how best they can at the moment. But now it looks like uh, CJ and uh, Mad Dog here are just going to co continue to return fire on the Western Front. But looks like uh, they are a little bit busy themselves. So they're just going to try and buy their time for the time being. Geek Fam does have a nice 2-2 split covering both the Western and Eastern flanks. But now, yeah, Geek Fam does look in a strong position. Now we'll just have to see how this part is going to pan out a little bit. Yeah, I'm just watching Rio Favors' uh, point of view and... It's looking pretty good. He, he did manage to take out one of the members from uh, Jatsu's team. Uh, Jatsu still only the M249. But meanwhile, Mox now coming in from Vengeance. They do take out Modi with a nice, decent range uh, shot here with his SLR. Only Mox and Dubito left alive from Team Vengeance. But Mox not going to be having that helmet to protect him from any headshots coming in. I believe from the side of Geek Fam now, they should be able to get. Modia, but I would like to see a smoke grenade being popped out here just uh, just because everyone will be focusing towards your direction. 
Yeah, absolutely. And looks like southwestern part is getting a little bit crowded here. Rio just going to try and move around oh, the side here, but he's going to run straight into the two members of Vengeance. He gets one, but looks like Mox going to get him back there. So that's going to be it for uh, the rest of uh, Airwolf Vince Pro after they took the chicken dinner in the last round here. But it looks like Geekfam pulling back a little bit here as they try and get into a better position here uh, just to prevent these other teams from getting inside the zone. So they're going to let the zone do the work for them here as it's only 10 seconds left before the hurt starts coming on big time. Not sure what Valdemort is shooting at. Just but... Oh no, so... Alright, uh, don't worry, I will... Make sure you know exactly what's what's going on here. Yeah. So that's, that's a challenge. You know, not having a picture there. Screenshot for me. Yeah. I'll, I'll screenshot every ten seconds and make sure that. Uh, I'll, no, no, I'll no, send no, it as, to in, you. as in the scores, the scores. Oh yeah, no problem, man. No problem, man. Uh, but yeah, I mean, in any case, uh, yeah, we see Doobie Two here just trying to zigzag for his life here as uh, KNY God is able to get that frag there. So it looks like GeekFam having six kills already here in this game as they look to have a nice strong finish to the end of this round. And uh, yeah, guys, how often have you seen this kind of circle here? This is this is good PUBG right here. But there are going to be uh, quite a number of teams still alive here. It looks like Coppin here going to try and see whether or not he can advance onto the rest of GeekFam for the time being. And looks like uh, he's just going to try and prime a lucky nade here. See whether or not he can catch Savior. But currently he looks a little bit off. I'm not sure that is going to work out in uh, his favor. But now the rest of uh, RRQ are moving in here after they have uh, navigated a bit with the vehicle at their disposal and now the circle is almost done for the time being but now they're making it permanent cover here as they are going to be trying to do their best here to actually just try and advance a bit more but cop in here just going to try and make sure that there's no flank coming in here from these players at the moment but looking at how things are going to be developing here then savior is actually moving around this side uh, he I'm might back. be able to oh nice one you managed to get back in game yep oh sweet one sweet oh, one here is in. almost gonna die here but he's able to catch out cop in there at the last <laughs> second there. Oh my goodness, that would have been so bad if uh, they went one man down in that manner. But luckily, he's able to pull away with it. But there's still two players left for RRQ at the moment. Everyone just kind of holding their position, at, actually, for the time being. Mad Dog just trying to see whether he can get a shot onto Private Dumb and vice versa here. So that's going to be a little bit of an interesting one here. So uh, yeah, now looking at how this is actually going to play a part here, we see that next circle is... Ooh, it's going to shift a little bit towards the western side. So Geekfam looks as though they can easily rotate here. But it's going to be the northern side, which is going to be interesting. Yep, and Jatsu still at the edge of the circle. He can rotate down towards the left side of uh, where he is. Uh, use a little bit of the terrain to take some cover, but uh, it's going to be careful as CJ and Madog might just be able to spot him out. Uh, they are currently occupied with the compound. He has Ping Pong Pangs and Private Dumb. So I would like to see Jatsu making a move just a little bit, trying to sneak up behind uh, this team over here on yeah. the bottom side. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I think uh, Dog's very happy to play in this position, actually. They're very close to getting inside the circle. Jatsu is probably just going to hang on for dear life. He knows that there's more than one player there, so that's probably why He's uh, holding his fire for the time being in any case, but Ping Pong Pangs and Private Dumb just trying to spot out where the other teams are before they start making their move here. But GeekFam going to really hold uh, any further advancement from RRQ currently, who are still going to be pushed here by the circle. So Jang's just going to try and get some good vision onto Valdemort here and, uh, and company at the moment as uh, him and Zalman are just going to try and edge a little bit inwards here. But they got a long way to go here. If they get caught out, that's going to be it for them. Yeah, we're going to be very interesting to see how the final circle is going to be in play. Uh, we do see team number one. This is RRQ, I believe. They yep. will, like you mentioned, they will, They are going to be pushed into the into Geekfam's line of sight, line of fire, in fact. So they're going to be careful. Uh, try to, maybe this is the time where they want to use their resources, try to pop some smokes, move in, use the terrains as well. Uh, yeah, the circle is coming in right now. Uh, I think like after all those crazy rotations that we saw earlier, I'd be surprised if they have too many more smokes left available to them. Geekfam, they got smokes for days, I think. Um, but yeah, Valdemore actually getting caught out by the blue of all things. And Zalman is the last player here for RRQ, just trying to survive a little bit here. But looks like um, Private Dumb here are going to weigh in a little bit here, but Zalman gets caught by the blue. So 
Looks like he's a bit exhausted from all that biathlon uh, sports here. But now it looks like CJ looking to put the hurt on. He's able to steal the kill there. Or no, Jang's actually managed to catch him. CJ was looking wow. to really steal that. But Geekfam starting to put the pressure onto the rest of these teams here. And now it looks like uh, Mad Dog goes down. But the rest should be forthcoming here. Now this final circle again is shifting to the western side. But Geekfam does have that good vantage point here. And really should be able to uh, prevent any further advancement from actually going on uh, too far. But they are going to shift all the way over towards that eastern side here. And now Jatsu could actually work in their favor. He does know the two players from... Uh, Dogs is currently towards his eastern side, and they are fast crouching on his position. Ah, but Jatsu, that tree is not as fat as some of the other ones. It's know. not so, as thick. Yeah, so it's always going to be an uphill battle for that one, you know. So now it's going to be Dogs versus Geek Fam here. So we're nicely set up here, but of course, advantage going to be towards uh, Geek Fam. Now, Jank's just going to try his luck, move up through across the road here, and see whether or not he can uh, catch any further advancement. Currently, CJ all by himself on the left side and just looting up a bit more. And he's actually trying to peek over the top, but Jank's going to do a little bit of snaking here. See whether he can spot out CJ, but currently CJ able to get Savior there. And looks like he's going to pop up over the top here. But Jank's not able to confirm the kill. And oh. now CJ is going to come out with a big play there. He's got two frags there. And now it's a two-on-two -two situation. Body and KNY God going to be the last players. They could have held the circle and really forced him to really come out. But now it looks like it's going to be a two-on-two -two situation. Now, Mad Dog is trying to come across the road here. Savior is down, leaving only KNY got to hang it out. But KNY got able to knock down uh, Mad Dog. And now he's just oh trying to spray God, into the, the smoke. One. Oh, this is a tense situation. This is just like uh, game number one. We did see it. But it looks like CJ going to pop up over the left side. I think KNY got not able to see him easily, but he's catching some little bit here so CJ taking a lot of damage in that exchange but he knows exactly where he is I hope he still got a grenade left to actually throw in there so uh, CJ gonna pop out just a little bit here and more spraying coming in from KNY God so KNY God does have a little bit of advantage on with the height over here CJ doesn't have a lot of space to work with but now it looks like KNY God can be using it for days he's using a first aid kit for uh, that bit of health but uh, that's okay you know if you want to make sure that you can Come out with the over here. Small price to pay. But CJ will be forced to come out more into the open. Oh! But, oh. That headshot! Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, he's still got his uh, helmet with him. So he's he's still okay for the time being here. But he does have to try and contend with this uh, new dynamic. CJ has just deployed another smoke here, and it could be interesting to see how this is going to play out here. Now, currently, CJ just going to lean a little bit out to the side here, see whether or not he can catch Five seconds. Okay. Yeah, is this is going to be the go time here. Another smoke coming out for CJ, and uh, I'm not sure whether or not KNY God has got one himself here. So this could be a very tricky last no, one -on -one situation. No, on the left side! CJ coming out in the open here. He takes a lot of hits, so he retreats back to the smoke here. And now he's going to try and heal up as best he can. Uh, and looks as though that CJ going to pop out a little oh, bit. He takes enough more hits here. But KNY got oh, enough just pain. enough ammo to try and finish this. But it looks like uh, CJ is out in the open. I bet KNY got, cannot oh, imagine oh, why oh, he hasn't oh, got oh. this yet. But he finally does it. So... Excellent play from him. He's got a little bit of health there, so that was exactly. an awesome one-on-one -on -one there Flash to finish back. off this epic round, which we saw fall on the southern island. I mean, how many times do you get a game like that, guys? So that was yeah. uh, that was an amazing game, Jin. I, I'm so pumped up from that one. Oh my god, Geek Fam coming out in first place there, taking 11 kills as well. So Kane God, Kane White God. Really leading the way with six kills to boot there. But we did see that CJ and Mad Dog were killing everyone left, right, and center. They even took out three of his teammates as well. So CJ leading the way with the three, no, nine kills actually. Um, and it really proved to be a, a difficult proposition. But I think he ran out of heals there right at the end. So it was yeah. always going to be an uphill battle quite literally and figuratively. And uh, in third place, we did have uh, Team Ronin able to stay alive there with Jatsu. But... You need to lose some weight, man. I don't think you can actually hide behind that that skinny palm tree there. So, um, fortunately, he was in... Tree is not thick. 
Yeah, so unfortunately, or rather fortunately, he still managed to get third place for his team. And in fourth place, we have uh, Team Mista from Philippines there, able to hang out in the concrete complex there, but they had a few too many teams around them, so it was always going to be a very difficult situation for them. And then in fifth place, coming in from the east side on the later circles was RRQ, and they were getting shot up by everyone. Mista was shooting at them, they had Geek Fam shooting at them, it was... It was just a nightmare for them, but they did manage to come across the bridge. I think they took out Regium in that big battle there, you know. But it was so cool to see all these teams just trying to find every single way that they could get onto the island. It's, it's, it's quite cute, in a way, I guess, to see everyone just moving. <laughs> yeah. Just, I don't know, man. It's just It was a weird game, but definitely an interesting one. I'm going to see how the next game plays out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you don't get to see that a lot in competitive PUBG, guys. So anyways, that is going to be out it for round number three, guys. So we will be taking a short break. And when we be back, uh, Jin and I will bring you through uh, round number four, which will be also on Miramar. May in may maybe I can join you for the next game. So yeah, oh, it's been okay. fun. Yeah, I have to oh, shame, calculate the, the scores and stuff. Uh, okay, fair enough, man. Yeah. Well, it, it's been great having you here. We got to do this more often, dude. Uh, really sure. enjoyed having you here on the stream. Maybe I can join your stream uh, soon in the future. When when I can actually stream. Yeah, yeah. Just just buy unlimited allowance, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that's easier said than done, right? But yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Anyways, that will happen soon, I'm sure. Anyways, but anyways, uh, thank you so much, Jin, for for coming uh, on here, and thanks yep. so much for uh, hosting the PUBG Southeast Asia Scrim City matches and everything week in and week out. Your work is really uh, quite uh, quite something for the whole Southeast Asian community. Appreciate it, man. All right, cheers. I'm going to go out first. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, yeah. guys. Uh, so, yeah, All we right. will be taking... Bye. All right, see you, Mood. Thanks, yeah. So, okay, guys, uh, we will be uh, now moving out here. So, um, see you back for round number four.